Hey, what's up everybody? It's the Hyphen here. And today we're gonna do a lens battle between two amazing lenses for the Sony full frame E-mount cameras. The Sony G Master 24 to 70 F 2.8 and the Tamron 28 to 75 F 2.8. Both these lenses work really well, but each of them have certain advantages over the other. So the big question is, which one should you get? So first let's talk about the zoom range. The Sony G Master has a standard mid range focal length of 24 millimeters to 70 millimeters. So you can go pretty wide and you can get kind of telephoto. The Tamron does 28 to 75. It's a little unorthodox, but the 28 is pretty close to the 24, just not wide enough. But this creates a certain advantage for the Tamron with size and weight that I'll get more into in a bit. But they decided to go 28 to 75. So you get five millimeters extra on telephoto, but you lose out four on the wide end. So I've heard people complain that the 28 millimeters is not wide enough compared to the 24. And it can be true for some people, but honestly, the 24 to 28 is not a huge deal breaker for me. I shoot a lot of weddings, quinceaneras, and full day events where I constantly need to be switching back and forth from wide to telephoto. And for me, 28 millimeter is more than enough. I personally haven't really come across a time where I'm like, I wish I had an extra four millimeters on the wide side. But I do hear more people complain about that as opposed to having the extra five millimeters on the telephoto on the Tamron lens. It seems that the 70 to 75 is not that big a difference for most people, whereas most people do prefer to have the 24. So for the zoom range, I'm gonna have to give it to the Sony because 24 to 70 is what most people are used to and that's what they kind of prefer. But honestly, for me, 28 to 75, perfectly fine. So now let's talk about the size and weight. And this is where Tamron's 28 to 75 really benefits the Tamron lens over the Sony. With the Tamron lens starting out at 28 millimeters, it actually allowed them to make a way smaller and lighter lens. Compared to the G Master, it's drastically different and way more comfortable in the hand. The Sony is so massive and so heavy. It honestly does feel like overkill. If you're doing photo or video and you're doing a full day event or long shoots, then the Tamron is definitely the way to go. Now, when it comes to the build and construction, Sony definitely takes the win there. It's beautifully made. It's all metal and definitely feels like a very high end piece of equipment. Whereas the Tamron is an all plastic build and the body feels cheap when compared to the Sony. However, even though the Tamron may seem more cheap, it's actually very well built. It doesn't feel flimsy or cheap. However, the lens hood for the Tamron definitely does feel pretty weak and brittle. It's very thin and it's just not well built for the lens hood, though it functions properly and it doesn't seem like it's gonna break anytime soon. It just compared to the Sony lens hood, I'm not a fan of that Tamron lens hood. Another thing to note about the Tamron design is that the focus ring and zoom ring are inverted in their placement compared to the Sony lenses. Now the Sony has a little extra functionality where it has a manual and autofocus switch as well as a custom programmable button. The Tamron has neither of the two. So if you're used to Sony lenses, the Tamron might take a little extra time to get adjusted to. Now another big win for the Tamron lens is the minimum focusing distance. For the Tamron, it's about 7.5 inches, whereas for the Sony G Master, it's about 15 inches. So you have to be a lot further back from your subject with the Sony lens. So with the Tamron, you're actually able to get more macro-like shots. And personally, I think that's a huge benefit on the versatility of the Tamron lens. Now, one of the best things about Sony cameras is their top of the line autofocus. So the lenses definitely need to be able to have top-notch autofocus and traditionally, third-party lenses have not been that great on autofocus for Sony cameras. However, the Tamron definitely is a game changer for third-party lenses because their autofocus is fantastic. And between the Sony G Master and this Tamron, the autofocus is pretty much a toss-up. They're almost identical. When it comes to both video and photo autofocus and tracking, including face and eye detect, the Tamron handles it almost just as good as the Sony. Where you really start to notice a difference is in low light situations. In lower light, when things are a little underexposed, the Sony lenses definitely outperform the Tamron. So that Sony G Master will do a lot better in low light. 
and the Tamron can hunt a little bit more underexposed. But when things are pretty well lit and the exposure is done right, the Tamron is amazing. But on autofocus, overall, top to bottom, I have to give it to the G Master. Now, when it comes to sharpness, both lenses are also super close. And most of the shots that I've done and tested, the Tamron actually seems to be slightly sharper, not only in the center, but especially even in the corners, though it's not much sharper. It's not a huge difference, but if I had to pick one, I'd definitely say the Tamron is sharper. Now, when it comes to barrel distortion, especially on a wide focal length, the Sony does way better than the Tamron. The Tamron definitely has a lot more noticeable distortion and bowing. And though it can be fixed in post for photos pretty easily, especially if you're shooting raw, on video, it's a little harder to correct. But if you go into your Sony camera's menu settings, you can actually turn on lens distortion compensation as well as vignetting. And that definitely helps the Tamron a lot more. So for distortion, I gotta give it to Sony. Same with vignetting. Now, a great thing about both lenses is that they are constant f2.8 throughout their zoom range. This allows you to have more background blur and a more shallow depth of field to make your subject in focus pop from the background. Both produce beautiful round bokeh. However, the win I have to give to the Sony because the bokeh balls on the Tamron seem to have little onion rings and that can be slightly distracting, though it's mostly noticeable if you're super zoomed in and you look super close to those bokeh balls. But overall, I'm very happy with the look that comes out of the Tamron lens, but because the bokeh is smoother on the G Master, I gotta give the win to the Sony. Now here is the big one, price. When it comes to price, there is a massive, massive difference. The Tamron retails for 880 bucks whereas the Sony G Master retails for $2,200. So the Tamron is less than half the price. Both lenses are really fantastic and they create a beautiful image. Though I would have to say that the Sony is slightly better overall, but not by much. And because it's such a small difference overall, I have to go with the Tamron as the better buy. The Tamron gets you more bang for your buck. Its functionality and its quality rival the Sony G Master so closely that for video and photo, that's what I go with. That's what I recommend. But if you have the extra money, if it's not gonna break your bank, then why not get the Sony? It does have overall a slightly better performance. So if you guys are interested in getting either of these lenses, I do have links in the description where you can purchase them from B&H Photo or Amazon. It doesn't change the price that you get it at, but it does help this channel. Please make sure to drop a like on the video and drop a comment below if you have any more questions and please make sure to subscribe. I have a lot more videos coming soon. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.